Hello and welcome back to the Naked Marriage Podcast. We are Dave and Ashley Willis. And on this podcast, we address the truth about sex, intimacy, and lifelong love. Today, guys, I'm so excited about um, our guests. Matt and Lauren Chandler are two of the most prominent voices in global ministry. They've impacted us from from a distance for a long time. We've really been impacted by their their books and their teachings. But recently, they've been in the headlines uh, as they've walked through a really unique season in their marriage uh, that that was brought to light from um, Matt uh, admitting to um, an an online interaction with a woman uh, that that he said was crossing the line. It was not romantic. It was not sexual. But the frequency and familiarity of their back and forth interactions and joking um, was was brought to light in a way that the church and he felt like, you know, this this is out of bounds. And so they're going to walk through what boundaries look like in marriage, what they've looked like through this season and this kind of very public season of walking through um, this event. And so they're so gracious to come and share this. You're going to hear some great wisdom from the Chandler. So That's let's right. dive in. Well, like I said in the intro today, guys, we are so excited about today's episode. And I know I say that every single time and I start losing credibility because I always say it and it is always true, but it's extra true today because we've got Matt and Lauren Chandler. And, you know, we, one of the great things that I love about the work we get to do is God sometimes just, just opens up cool doors of opportunity for us to connect with people who've impacted us from a distance for many years and who've blessed us with their ministry and leadership. And, and today's one of those days. And so guys, welcome. And thanks for being here. Yes. Oh, listen, we were, we we're excited. We we're kind yeah. of fans. <laughs> so we were, yeah. Yeah. marriage yeah. podcast, yeah. we're in. So we were, <laughs> of, and we, well, and we do, well, we do know that since marriage is that picture of Christ and his church, the more we can help people understand it, lean into it, flourish in it, the more the world gets to see the beauty of the gospel. Uh, and so that's just another compelling reason to hop in this and, and have this conversation. Yes. Yeah. So, so good. And for more on that, check out the Chandler's book, Mingling of Souls. You guys are coming out of a, a, a very unique season where Matt, you stepped away from a while, uh, for a while, uh, because of, uh, an, an online interaction that you said was non-sexual, non-romantic, but but still yeah. inappropriate. And I'd, I'd love just in your own words for you to talk about anything you want to talk about related to kind of what you guys are learning through this season and that time of stepping away and kind of, you know, recalibrating and now, you know, coming coming back and being, you know, full force back, you know, back in the saddle, back in ministry again. But just to, you know, just to, to hear from, from both of you what you've learned through that and what, what you're learning right now. Yeah. yeah. Do you want me to start? Do you want to? Yeah. Well, I think the thing that was, as far as it pertains to our marriage, is like we both have felt like the last few years have been the best, most intimate, deepest mm -hmm. times of our marriage. Uh, the gift from this season um, has really been that um, because usually in situations like this, I'm on the inside of those conversations, but the conversations at the church were about me. <laughs> that kind of took yeah, me out of those rooms in the season. Mm -hmm. And what made that painful uh, but but good was that the way we do life here at the village is my closest friends. I mean, the longevity of the guys that have been with me, I think one of the reasons we're a healthy congregation is because if I look at Josh Patterson, he's been here for 18 years. If I look at Trevor Joy, he's been here for 13 years. If I look around... There's a longevity here, which means we have suffered deeply together, and we've also experienced great victories together. What made this unique for us as a married couple is it was a very painful event based on my foolishness. So it's not brain cancer. It's not um, it's not ridiculous accusations from a secular news source supposedly writing from a Christian vantage point. It wasn't the usual nonsense. It was foolishness that I had, I'm the domino um, and I'm out of the rooms. So my normal places of processing with those brothers, I, I didn't really have that. Um, and so what that did in a real unique way was it put us together where it, it really, it really became it's Jesus and Lauren. And, and that's the spot. That's the space. 
So in what was a really um, humiliating um, season, uh, brought about by my own foolishness, um, I, I felt completely safe in my covenant with Lauren. I, I didn't feel like I had betrayed that covenant. She didn't feel like I had betrayed that covenant. Now, did she want to punch me in the face and did she use some choice language about what she liked to do to me? Yes, but not, but I felt safe there. Right. And where these brothers that I've been walking with for over decades were having to handle me in a way that they hated and I hated. Mm -hmm. The Lord drew us together in, in a unique and beautiful way. Mm -hmm. And the covenants held for 20 something years through thick and thin. And this, it feels to me like this served mm -hmm. to bring us into another level of intimacy that we didn't know was there and we didn't think we were missing to begin with. Uh, and that's been the real gift in our marriage coming out of this. Mm -hmm. Anything? Yeah. I mean, I would just echo everything that he shared. Um, you know, there, there were really hard days that, but we were together, yeah. you know, and we were, um, working it out together. Mm -hmm. Um, and even now, where Matt is back in the pulpit and he's kind of, he never stopped working. I mean, he was still meeting with people and in yeah. meetings and, and doing the other aspects of his job. Um, but I am mourning a little bit of the loss of that season where it was the three of us. Where we got to go to church Matt together. Matt and me right. and Francis. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, just, and I, I've seen now the, um, uh, you know, you, he, I was a pastor's wife at age 22. He, he became the lead pastor at the village church when he was 28. So it's like, kind of like, you know, the frog in the boiling water. You don't realize the toll that, um, yeah. that ministry life takes on you until, you know, I, you were out of it for a second. And then, I mean, we're still in it, but like, in particular preaching, which is his main gift. I mean, yeah. that you're exceptionally good at it. Um, it is mm -hmm. what you're passionate about. You come alive. It's, it's a very primary gift. And so when he didn't have that, there was, there was extra time to, I don't know, have with one another or dream about the future or whatever. And so now that he's back in having to prepare a message, you know, every week and then reaching two services and not being in preaching shape, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> it takes a, a little rusty. Spiritual, yeah, yeah. Spiritual toll on him, uh, that I've just had gotten used to before. And then now I'm like, Oh yeah, this is, this is a lot on him. And then ends up being a lot on me and yeah. the kids yeah. too. Yeah. And so I do have a little bit of grief that I'm having to mourn of, um, of him going back, but it's good. Like it's more just counting the cost. It's like, okay, I know what the cost is a little yeah. bit better than I did before. Would you coach that? And I'm sorry, I'm going to interview Lauren. Yes. Would you coach yes. that? Is, is time or vitality? What is it that's missing? Uh, it... A little bit of a little both. both. A little bit of both. It's and helpful. that's, and that's okay. You know, it's just, it's part, it's part of it. And I think too, I mean, we'll be at the village as long as the Lord has us and probably 20 more years, but it also gave me almost a sneak peek into what our uh, ministry could be like together. Um, and maybe that will be at the village eventually now that our kids are older, you know, um, but it felt more like a, we're doing this together rather than, okay, you do your thing at the church and I'm going to do my thing at the church, you know, in, in this capacity. Um, it felt more like, oh, this is what we're doing together. Yeah. Criticism has always been part of the price of influence. and But now within the church, there are all these people acting like they have the spiritual gift of criticism. Like, you know, like yeah, that's yeah. an actual thing and that they just feel like it's their job to, to go around correcting yeah. and and it, it really is toxic. And so I'm so glad you said you said all of that because the it has to start with the church. I think within the church world, you know, we've been so obsessed with with failure porn, as it's been called, you know, where it's like we, we just try to we, we sensationalize um, 
what's thing. wrong with everything. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and, yeah. and it's really done in a, a very unbiblical way and a destructive way. And mm-hmm. well, but before before we land the plane, I, I want to honor you guys' time and not keep you too long. But one issue we we talk about on the podcast a lot is is boundaries, just boundaries in marriage, boundaries with the opposite sex. What what do you feel like are some just healthy healthy boundaries in terms of interactions with the opposite sex? Well, I think you know you you have to apply wisdom, um, and it, in in regards to your own heart and life, and not think too highly of yourself and what you're capable of or not capable of. Um, and so I do think like, like having specific boundaries about, um, how you're going to interact with the opposite sex are, are super important. We are not, um, like even how we operate at the village church, we're not a Billy Graham rule place. We have women on the exec team. We have, um, dynamic women leaders and communicators here at the village, Jen Wilkin. And uh, before, you know, we had Lori Wilbert here for a while and I could go on and on. And, and so, but, but there are certain boundaries. Like I, I wouldn't go out like Lindsay Enningberg's two offices down from me, um, direct one of our directors in the operational ring, just a phenomenally gifted woman. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to hop in Lindsay's car and the two of us go have lunch today together. We're just not going to do that. Now, might me and Andrea, my assistant, and Lindsay go have lunch together? Yeah, maybe, very much so. Um, but just Lindsay and I aren't going to hop on, uh, you know, uh, on a trip together. Or I mean, that's just nonsensical. Um, and, and even, but we're, but we are. Lindsay and I are good friends. Um, but I wouldn't. But like a boundary would be, the only thing I'm ever going to tell Lindsay about my marriage are the really good, beautiful things. If I'm struggling with Lauren or in a season, that's Josh Patterson. That's Brian Miller. That's I don't, there's no, there's no weakness in Lauren that ever gets discussed with another woman ever. There's nothing she's doing. That's bothering me that ever gets discussed with another woman. There's no, what, I mean, I could just go on and on. It's just all Lauren is, is awesome to another woman. (laughs) If another woman is talking to me, um, in some setting, Lauren's like, like the greatest gift outside of salvation God's ever given me. There's no weakness in this woman. Maybe laundry, maybe, yeah. <laughs> but maybe not even that. That's right. I, yeah. That's your second spiritual gift. That's it. So, um, so, so that would be one because I'm not a, I, I just think I've got more problems with the Billy Graham rules than I think it actually solves. Uh, but maybe that's a whole nother discussion for another day. So we, we do have friends that are the opposite sex, but there's certainly boundaries within that framework. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere with Lindsay where there's not a group of us going. Um, I'm not consistently texting back and forth with Lindsay. That's not on a group text. Yeah. So I think all the same boundaries. We both have share the same boundaries. He just has more opportunities for relationships with other women just because of work where sure. I, yeah. yeah, I don't much. Well, talk about how do you, like when you, I think about your bands or spaces like that. Well, usually I am the only woman and it's a bunch of guys (laughs) and they're usually younger than me. So, and so, uh, that matters. Young guys don't find you beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) You know, there's just, I don't know. There's just a, yeah. Same rules though. I don't talk about, uh, I just want to say, there's no like 26 year old going. Lauren Chandler's gross. No, I'm there's not. No, <laughs> they're younger. I was like, what does that I, mean? I was, yeah. and one of my bands, uh, a guy that played with me. I mean, I could be his mom. He's Audrey's age, anyway. But uh, yeah, I just I make sure that I I, I don't um, you know talk about things that would create some kind of bond or would kind of put me in this per in this man against you or, you know, in between us. So, I mean, the same, the same boundaries, same rules. It's just, I don't, I don't have to activate them as yeah. often as you do. And I would, I think a, a, a key learning for me in particular is the, the platform of communication matters. Yeah. Um, and what I mean by that is like some of the trouble I got myself in, uh, and some other words I would use is oh, frequency yeah. and familiarity, yeah. Yeah. um, had to do with frequency yeah. and I was somewhat, I, I think the better way to say it would be, I lacked awareness around frequency because I wasn't getting into Instagram to chat to anyone. 
I was getting into Instagram to post or to look at something that post or, or look at my feed and I'd see a red bubble and I would click on the red bubble and I'd interact. And then I would maybe put my phone down and then, you know, an hour later, pick it back up and then there'd be a bubble and I'd interact with the bubble. And it hid the frequency from me in a way that if it had been a text message, I think I'd have been like, ah, yeah. that was, we just pinged each other 10 times today over nothing. That That's yeah. probably, that's probably not a good thing. Yeah. And so I, I also think the medium matters, mm -hmm. especially yeah. if it's a medium yeah. where you're distracted while you're interacting with it. Mm -hmm. And so like my thing now is on, I mean, there's just no DMing on Instagram other than maybe a sentence. There is no ongoing relationship on Instagram, um, yeah. even if it's completely platonic or there's, because this one was completely platonic mm -hmm. on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but it's just not wise. Mm -hmm. And so that's yeah. the, that, that's a new boundary. Yeah. Yeah. I love that I brought you all together because I know when these kind of things happen and like you said, you know, Matt, like not knowing how it was going to be handled, not being able to be in the room to decide necessarily everything that was handled. Um, but I, I do want to say right out of the gate, I feel like from our perspective of just of what's put out there publicly, you all handled it with such grace because a lot of times, you know, we've been in ministry for a long time as well. And we've, you know, we've seen, a lot of different things happen with with pastors and it's not always handled so gracefully when the powers that be kind of decide what road you need to walk and you guys just had such integrity and such um grace and i, I just as a as a person outside just looking in it, it it just was awesome to see that and i feel like um that in and of itself is kingdom building so i just want to say that just as a like an outsider looking in, um, it gives us hope because a lot of times these things snowball and turn in to just, yeah. you know, yeah. a lot, a lot, huge, you know, bigger issues that you're like, this wasn't even this issue. But, um, I do want to say, I'm sure that, you know, here you are, you're both handling it. Like you said, it's the two of you and Jesus. I'm sure there were some voices. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit you in the face. Um, <laughs> if you're watching, I'm just about like using my hands too much about to hit Dave in the face. Um, but I'm sure that there were like some voices from the outside you know, that weren't necessarily saying kind things and, and also people getting the story wrong and saying things that happened that didn't happen. And that can be yeah. so mad. And yeah. how did you all handle that? I mean, I know that had to be going on. I, my, my primary way of handling it is not to read anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm on, I mean, I've got, I think I've got half a million Twitter followers. I don't think I've got on Twitter in five, six, seven years. I'd be curious of when the last time I posted. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. that that place is so toxic, so wicked, so, mm -hmm. um, and, and Instagram's easy because I can delete you and block you and I'm like quick and without mercy. Like yeah. even if you maybe yeah. you're trying to be kind, but I'm in a bad spot, I might block you. So it's just not, I'm just not gonna give somebody permission to come at me or ruin my day. Mm -hmm. One, the Lord hasn't given me them for yeah. accountability. Yeah. Like, yes, I, I mean, I obviously have accountability. I mean, I, and they're not a good old boys club yeah. and, and they just were unbelievably yeah. courageous yeah. to step out and do this, have so much respect for our elders here. And I'm a man under authority. Mm -hmm. And, and so, so I did hear things because people will be well-meaning mm -hmm. and they'll try to text me like friends, like good friends who after the blast radius has settled down, I'm going to have a talk to where they'll just be like, Hey man, I can't believe Christianity today said this and this and this. Mm. And I'm like, well, I had no idea anybody said that mm -hmm. until you texted me this. Mm -hmm. And so that's my, yeah. yeah, that's my primary way is I'm just not, here's where I can sleep. I know what's true. My wife knows what's true. A group of very godly men and women knows what's true. Yeah. And I'm in happy submission to their authority. Yeah. And I have just learned over the years that there is a group of people that do not know us and they love us. And no matter what we do, they love us. There could be a video leaked of me clubbing a baby seal and there'd be a big group of people that are, what did that baby seal do? That's Matt Chandler. He can't, but they don't know us. <laughs> They don't know us and they don't, they certainly don't know what's best for us. Right. And then there's a group of people and it's a smaller group of people and they have just already decided that we're the problem and they dislike us and anything they can read into anything we do that's negative and slanderous, they're going to do. And 
they don't know us and I'm not accountable to them and I don't owe them anything. I don't owe them explanations. We don't owe them time or energy or emotion. And then there's this new group of people that I think are indifferent to us, Mm -hmm. but it's really good for their business model. If I do something shady or if Lauren and I fall apart or because it's going to get clicks um, to their pages, blogs, whatever's. And so what I'm trying to do for our own sanity, what we try to do is we feel like we're fully known people. Like we don't have a lot of secrets. We walk in deep intimacy with good friends over a long period of time. We feel known and seen. And I, I am confronted and that might be too strong of a word. I am asked about my life frequently from those who are in proximity. And that's what's going to matter to me. Um, So the praise of man, I need to limit my interaction with that. And the critique, or maybe the better word is criticism of man. I'm I'm going to limit my exposure to that because what I'm getting from those closest to us, what we get from those closest to us is an honest assessment of our integrity and uprightness. Yeah. And I can live on that. Yeah. And I think that's a really great insight, though, that there are certain certain mediums and also just certain set, certain situations, situations yeah. where naturally people are going to let their guard down. Right. Moments of deep trauma. I think moments of great celebration. Yeah. You know, when you're kind of on the mountaintop and high fiving, and how quickly you know that can lead to to moments of, of bonding that could cross lines yeah. of, of intimacy that are completely unintentional. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just thankful for the conversation today, and for you guys being willing to to have it, because I, I feel like. I feel like in a lot of ways, the, the, the courage and the transparency with which you two have, have navigated this and, and just been so out front with what you, you're learning through the whole thing, I think that it could help prevent a lot of people um, from, from crossing, crossing lines that could, that could lead to adultery, you know, because I think that it, it's so often, so many of the couples we counsel that, that end up in an affair, it starts out innocently. Right, it starts not out for that. Yeah. without you know without any kind of sense of boundaries and or frequency or any of those things. And next thing you know, you've developed a bond, and that bond um, goes from platonic to romantic. And you know, thankfully, you know, this was you, you guys were able to nip this in the bud long before it got there. But um, I think your courage and being willing to talk about it will maybe give other people the courage to ha- have conversations about what are those places in my mm-hmm. life where I've, I've let a blind spot develop in my social media behavior and in my interactions with the opposite sex. And, and maybe that's going to be some of the important conversations that even come out of this episode that, that by applying some of the wisdom you've learned today from the Chandlers, that, mm-hmm. that it could safeguard your marriage and, and prevent, um, you know, prevent potentially something tragic from happening down the road. So thank yeah. you guys so much for sharing it before we sign off though. I want, we're, we're in in every one of these interviews at the start of the year with, with allowing folks to share one nugget of marriage advice. It could be anything, big, small, funny, yes. serious. And, uh, yeah. and, and so of the folks that have been waiting this whole episode for this oh. nugget of gold for the yeah. channel. Not too much pressure. They anything. fast forwarded. They skipped the whole conversation just to get to just this for point just from for each them. of you. So what do you got? I honestly think, um, like flourishing marriages are like they're just cultivated over time. Yeah. And so uh, to just keep leaning in. So we still, yeah. we, I mean, we go out, we d- still date once a week as best we can. Uh, we're not legalist. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but we still actively date one another. We want to play and have fun. Um, life's hard. So let's piddle, let's play around a little bit. Um, and I know those are two consistent. What would you add? Yeah. Um, this is just kind of a little small thing, but just finding ways to uh, show your spouse that you care. So Matt really cares about our, we do French press um, coffee every morning. Nice. He's the one that wakes up first, and so he does it. But it really fills his love tank <laughs> if yeah, I get it ready for him the night before. So oh, like yeah. the beans are in the grinder, yeah. the water. So finding that one thing. Now, I don't do it all the time. You're fine. But, <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> feel loved and seen and cared for and thought about. I know I'll get the coffee ready for him for the morning. And it, it makes him so happy. It does. So. And a free one. I'll do a bonus. Um, we, had, we didn't broach this subject. But it's it's okay to calendar sex. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's okay to calendar sex. It's not, it doesn't take the pizzazz. 
of it or be yeah. like, get that thing on the calendar. I mean, I, I was texting earlier today. What time does Reed get yeah. home from school? <laughs> Looking for a window. <laughs> Afternoon delight. <laughs> so calendar it, man. I so, totally agree. Totally. It'd be the best thing on your calendar. I'm telling you. Look We've all got stuff it. on the calendar we don't look forward to, but you got a little star by 2 p.m. on Tuesday, and you <laughs> right. know what that means? Like you're gonna look you can forward. Use those filters, right? If you if you got an assistant that sees your calendar, or your kid does or something, you should be like, um, just start like check the garage or just have some codes or yeah. something. Yes, that, codes. There you go. Just put French press. French press. That's right. French there press. Go. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> French press, 2 p.m. That's a good time for French press. Anytime's right for French press. Pick me up. Yeah. Right, anytime. Anyway, yeah. that would that be ours. Oh, wow. I love it. You guys are just awesome. Thank you all so much for taking the time. We know you're busy people, and we just count it such a privilege to have this conversation with you. So thank you guys yeah. so much. And for everybody listening, guys, listen, do yourselves a favor and connect with the Chandlers. Uh, you can find them on on social media. Um, you can you go to the Village Church, either yeah. online or in person. If you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area, check out their many books and resources. They are both a just a wealth of wisdom, and we are honored, honored to have connected with you guys today. So yes. thanks again, and, and God bless you both. Well, y'all take care. We'll see you.